Good afternoon. We gather here today, yes, with a sense of, of loss and of sadness, but also in a great spirit of thanksgiving. To give thanks for the life of Alistair Johnson, for all that he meant within his family, and to his many friends here in Bermuda. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them, they are in peace. Jesus said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We sing the hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who loves us with an everlasting love, and who turns the shadow of death into the resurrection of life, help us now to turn our hearts and minds to the promise of that resurrection. Though we have fond memories of the past, help us to dwell not only on these memories, but to look always in hope to the future. In the quietness of this time, speak to us of eternal things. Help us to know that death is not the end, but the gate through which we pass into the rest and the safety of your keeping. And help us to know and to understand that those whom we love become forever a part of us, blended in mind and memory, made holy forever within our souls. And help us too to know that that which is good and lovely remains indestructible in your keeping for all time. Almighty God, as we leave here this day, Lead us gently back to life, secure in the knowledge that there is nothing in life which need terrify us and nothing in death of which we should be afraid. For at the last, all lies safe in your eternal keeping. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our readings from Scripture, our first reading by Roderick. Okay, I'm live. 
Okay. This is a, a Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh help. Help me cometh from the Lord, which may help her heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Our gospel will be read for us by Robert. This is taken from John, uh, St. John 14. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Peace. I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid amen Now invite John Dale to sing for us. It is indeed to uh, be have this privilege of performing at Alastair's final command variety performance, as it seems this afternoon. Alistair and I go along uh, a long way back uh, musically, uh, right in the early 70s, to singing carols at the Police Recreation Club and the Mariners Club played together in concerts, weddings, funerals. We always had one challenge though. Through my ignorance, I couldn't read music and he was a stickler for sticking to the notes. So I've chosen this wonderful world because I think Alistair would have liked this. I'm gonna sing it a cappella with my thought of him playing his heavenly organ uh, and trying to tell me, get this right, get that right. Um, because I like it because uh, Alistair's sky was always blue, and he would be so thrilled to see so many people gathered for him, shaking hands and greeting each other. And as you know, this is by Louis Armstrong. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky is also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. 
and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, is also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. As Louis would have said. <laughs> Thank you. And now I see what's listed as some remarks about Alistair. And first of all, I'll come on, Roger. Roger. Good afternoon, everyone. It really is a privilege to be here this afternoon to say a few remarks about my good friend Alistair, or Shaky as everybody knows him. On behalf of the Bermuda Ex Police Officers Association, I would like to express our sincere condolences to Alistair's family and friends, especially his two sons, Roderick and Stephen, to his granddaughter, Cassidy, um, and to Irene and Robert Vesper. And I would just like to mention Hassan Marouni and his wife, Anna, who was such a tremendous support to Alistair ever since he returned to Scotland. Many people in Bermuda are only known by their nicknames, and I think it would be fair to say that Alistair was no exception. He was known to all of his friends and colleagues in Bermuda as Shaky. I don't think, think I have to tell anybody that, but that was his nickname. And I've been looking around to find where on earth did he get that nickname, and um, somebody has told me re quite reliably that it came about when uh, Shaky was at the police club playing darts with John Rigger Morris. Rigger had a very steady hand when it came to playing darts, but Alistair tended to shake when sizing up how to hit the bullseye, and we do believe that it was probably Rigger Morris who gave him the nickname Shaky. If anybody knows anything different, please let me know after the service. Shaky was a Scotsman through and through, and rightfully very proud of it. But strangely enough, I've known him since 1964, and I could never remember him ever wearing a kilt. And I just spoke to members of his family, including Irene, and she assures me that he never wore a kilt. I think it had something to do with his knees, but I'm not quite sure. On checking through his police file in Bermuda, we know that he did his national service in the Royal Air Force. And when he applied to join the Bermuda police, he was working as a bank teller. Now, who on earth here can imagine our Shaky as a bank teller? Shaky's application was accepted, and he arrived in Bermuda in August 1959, along with another young recruit, Clive, nicknamed Fury Donald, who was an outstanding athlete who went on to become our commissioner of police, and he's here today. Not to be completely outdone, Shaky exhibited his own prowess as a sportsman. He played a fierce brand of football, and what was described by one of his partners John Coco Eve as incendiary tennis, along with his own brand of grit your teeth and hit, hit it golf. In fact, he's the only golfer known to have lost his driver on the then first hole at Ocean View Golf Club after spraying several balls off the tee into the woods over to the left. And the, these were rapidly followed by his club, for which he decided he had no further use. Is that Alistair? <laughs> Another example of this rather short fuse was when he was playing tennis one day with John Flaps Barnett. Shaky sized up what looked like it was going to be a superb smash, but it didn't quite happen 
It didn't quite happen as the ball went into the thicket of casuarinas rather than landing in the court. To prove that he was not only adept at throwing golf clubs, his tennis racket followed his ball and is probably still up there to this day. He was rather fond of gambling, believe it or not. Whether it was betting on his sporting ability or at the card table where he spent many hours developing his skills at poker. Shakey was a founding member of the Police Poker Club, which used to meet at various locations in and around Prospect. He had a room in Bettington Block as a young single man, and his room was used one night for a round of cards with five other members of the, the Police Poker Club. As you may have deduced, Shakey hated losing, but he was able to constrain his frustration when he lost a hand, normally. On this particular night, he had a strong run, and he bet the maximum allowed, which at that time was five pounds. Seems such a long time ago. The only problem was that the other member of the club left in the hand had a flush and won the pot. This was just too much for Shakey, who launched his old-fashioned alarm clock against a wall. And it's believed to this day that that dent in the wall created by dis uh, the disintegrating clock is probably still there. Not many people realize that the annual police mini marathon first run in 1969 was a direct result of Shakey challenging another formidable athlete, Pat Oddjob McBride, to a head-to-head -head race down to Flats Village and back to the police club. It's said that the challenge was issued after both had imbibed far too many dark and stormies. I find that hard to believe. Both had served in the armed forces, Pat in the Royal Marines and Shakey in the RAF. And Shakey had insisted that the RAF were physically far superior to the Royal Marines. I'm sure you can believe that one. After agreeing to spend one week in training for the run, the two set off around the six-mile course. Despite a ding-dong battle, the result failed to settle the argument because the two contestants crossed the finish line absolutely simultaneously. However, it was decided that due to the sterling efforts of shaky and odd job, this run should become part of the annual police sporting calendar. Shakey continued to take part and he would invariably have wages with other runners. We think that was just to give him the incentive to finish the course. We hear of one other sporting activity that he really enjoyed, which was wrestling on the PRC lawn after a few drinks with Mike Cool Cat Corkett, who happened to be about six or eight inches taller than Shakey, but it was all in good fun. Shakey was an excellent musician, playing the piano, the accordion, and the organ. He would be the life and soul of any party, especially at the police club, where he would lead sing-songs if suitably lubricated with a drink or two or three. Just to balance his activities, Shakey might be in full flow at the police club on a Saturday night, and the next morning might see him playing the organ right here behind where I'm standing right now. Shakey started his police career pounding the beat in Hamilton for the first year, and he was then transferred to the traffic department on shifts, driving patrol cars, partnering for some time with Clive Donald, who I know personally was one of the best drivers we've ever seen. I did ask Clive for a comment on Alistair's uh, driving prowess, and he refused to reply. <laughs> Shakey alternated between traffic and central division until he was promoted to sergeant, at which time he returned to traffic until he made the decision to leave the force. On a personal note, Alistair was best man at, at my wedding in 1970, and I can still picture him in full flow playing Christmas carols on our piano at home with family and friends gathered around for a festive evening. Shaky was, without doubt, one of the most beloved characters we've ever had the pleasure of working and socializing with in the Bermuda Police Force. Whether on or off duty, he always had a tremendous sense of humor, a positively wicked chuckle, a wonderful way with words, and a wry smile even in the most difficult circumstances. Those of us who knew Shakey were very disappointed when he decided to leave the service, 
because he was always fun and entertaining to be with. He was also a very knowledgeable and supportive supervisor. Fortunately, after resigning from the police, he did stay on the island for many years, and he still frequented his old haunts until he made the decision to return to Inverness. Communicating with him after his move was rather problematic because he didn't exactly take to the computer age and actually he was allergic to emails, many of which I sent to him. Even so, we managed to keep in touch with him occasionally through Hassan, who kept shaky abreast of events in Bermuda through the Royal Gazette online. It's no surprise that we've had well over 600 people check out our ex Police Association Facebook pages reporting on the passing of our dear friend, Alistair Shakey Johnson, who has left an indelible memory in all of our hearts. Thank you. You're aware that this is the second service that's been held to commemorate the memory of Alistair Johnson. And it's, I was asked by a, a previous minister of the church, Alan Garrity, if I could add a little bit of knowledge to some remarks that he wished to make at the funeral. The, the remarks were made through the minister uh, who was, uh, in fact, uh, running the, the, the service in Inverness. And this is what... Alan Garrity said about Alistair Johnson. Alistair Johnson was a good man. He came to Bermuda in 1959 to join the Bermuda Police Service. He was a very popular police officer. He loved music and in addition to his dexterity on the organ, formed a vocal quartet with three other police officers. He was married at Christchurch, Warwick, and the marriage led to him having two children, Stephen and Roderick. Stephen is a chartered accountant in London, while Roderick remained in Bermuda. Alan says, I was minister of Christchurch, Warwick. Alistair was the organist and had been for some considerable time. We coordinated on virtually every service for about seven years whether it was at sunrise on Easter morn or watch night on Christmas Eve. Alistair was utterly reliable, loyal, and faithful. I was never anxious that he would not be there whenever there was a funeral, baptism, or wedding. Apart from the chosen hymns, Alistair, who was musically talented, also chose music, which was always appropriate for the occasion. Alistair had some quirky characteristics. He would arrive early for the 8 a.m. service, sometimes wearing blue socks, which he had received from British Airways for flying with them. <laughs> and then we would discuss how Heart of Midlothian, his favorite football team, had performed at the weekend and what the result was. That was part of the, his deep-seated love of Scotland, to which he was to return for his last few years. Although his role in the police and in the church were in the public eye, Alistair never sought the limelight. He faithfully offered his skills and willingly made himself available to help, and he did so in an open and friendly way. We thank God for the life of Alistair Johnson. Our thoughts and prayers go to his nearest and dearest, especially Stephen and Roderick, his sons. That's the, those are the remarks from Alan Garrity, who was here recently uh, in Bermuda. You have been told that Alistair was called shaky by many people, and in all likelihood, many people did not know his Christian name. 
Breaking from scripture in a minute, I remember going to a meeting over here at the church one night, and Bill Black, who was alive at the time, said, uh, Flaps, what's your first name? I said, it's John. Oh, okay, thank you. To me, however, he was always Alistair from the date I met him in 1961 until today. As has been mentioned earlier, Alistair was always looking for ways he could help other people in deference to himself. On two occasions, he cycled from Land's End to John O'Groats and raised thousands of dollars for various charities. Accompanying him on one of the rides was Hassan Marouni, mentioned earlier, for his support of Alistair as his health began to fail. Hassan worked for a Scottish gas company and Alistair would accompany him on many days so they could chat about things going on in the world. In 1964, I was married and Alistair played the organ for us at St. Paul's Paget. He was also on hand when our family, after emigrating to Canada, traveled by car from Toronto to Vancouver. We had three children with us, together with a dog. We couldn't have made the trip without his help. Alistair loved his boys and spent many holidays traveling around Ontario and Quebec in a mobile home. The second time he did this, I was asked if my sons, Scott and Philip, could join him, Stephen and Roderick. Neither Alistair nor I had too much experience driving a mobile home, but after driving police cars, we felt we could do, handle anything on four wheels. Wrong. We picked up the vehicle in Mississauga, and before setting out on our expedition, went to the nearest Loblaws to pick up some groceries. It was while we were in the Loblaws parking lot that we became aware of an odious smell. We fiddled with as many knobs as we could find, and after hearing a swoosh, we strapped ourselves in, ready to head to Niagara Falls. Before moving, however, we wanted to take one last look at the outside of the mobile home. There on the tarmac was the reason for the smell. When we had fiddled with the knobs, one of them turned out to be the one which emptied the sewage holding tank. Before we could say, oh dear, we hot footed it out of the parking lot, pretending not to have seen what we had left behind. <laughs> Alistair was always looking for different places to take his boys to during their frequent visits to Canada. He always wanted to introduce them to something new and different. He truly loved Stephen and Roderick. Our daughter, Nicola, was married in Vancouver in 1998, and it will be no surprise who played the organ at our wedding. Alistair said he was honored to play the organ on the day that Nicola and Brent were married. Earlier this year, I, my wife and I went to a funeral of my wife's sister in uh, Surrey, and I chose a poem to speak at the service, and I think that this poem is very appropriate at this particular time. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyes and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. Alistair Muir Johnson was a very, very good man. My family and I are privileged to have called him our friend.
And now with a significant nod towards Alistair's place of birth, Colin John. Good afternoon, everyone. There's a lot that's been said about Alistair and his musical talents and everything. And um, I just like to say that um, Alistair and I used to sing around the, the seniors' homes for quite quite a number of years. And we actually we used to practice in this church at the very beginning. And um, there was Alistair. He played piano, and a guy called. Um, uh, Kevin Stokes, he he played guitar and I tried to sing, but we had a lot of fun and, and Alistair really enjoyed it. Anyway, this is a little song, Scottish song, the dedication for Alistair. It's called O'Flower of Scotland. O flower of Scotland, when will we see your likes again? That fought and they died for your wee bit hell and glen and stood against them. Proud Edward's army. And sent him homewards to think again. These hills are bare now, and autumn leaves lie thick and still. Or land that is lost now. Which those so dearly held and stood against him. Proud Edward's army and sent him homewards to think again. These days are past now. And in the past they must remain But we still shall rise now And be a nation again that stood against him Proud Edward's army And sent him homewards to think again O oh, flower of Scotland When will we see Your like again That fought and they died for Your wee bit hill and glen And stood against him Proud Edward's army And sent him homewards To think again To think Let us pray. Almighty God, for all your gifts and blessings to us in life, for the gift of life itself, for family and friends, and for the joy of loving and of being loved, we give you thanks. We thank you too that you have shared fully in our lives, in the times of joy and happiness of laughter and celebration, but also as now in the times of sadness and of loss. And as you have shared in our lives, we give thanks that we may share in yours in that closer presence, where neither life nor death, things present nor things to come, 
shall be able to separate us from your love. O God of all comfort, be to your people gathered here this day, and to those who cannot be here, but whose thoughts will be with us in this place and at this time. Be to them all a source of refuge and of strength. We pray especially for those whose sense of loss is greatest, for their love was deepest. May they be comforted by the knowledge that they do not mourn alone. May their sorrow be transformed by hope, their sense of loss gradually give way to thanks for so much given to them, which can never be lost nor tarnished. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all your servants departed this life, but especially today for your servant, Alistair Johnson, whom you have now received into perfect fellowship. For your love towards him in his life and for the loving memories family and friends will have of him, we give you thanks. We thank you for the spirit in which he led his life and for all in his life which reflected the warmth of your love and the graciousness of your spirit. We give thanks for these early years growing up in Scotland and for all that he meant as a son and as a brother. We give thanks for his national service and then his career in the police force here in Bermuda. His service in that force and for the many friendships made, lifelong friendships. We thank you too for his interests and his hobbies. We give thanks here especially for his years as an organist in Christchurch and all he contributed to worship here in this place. We give thanks, in fact, for all and every way in which he enriched the life of this island in which he lived and the lives of all who knew and loved him. And in a moment of silence, we each reflect on our own special memories of time shared with Alistair. O oh, gracious God, for these memories of time shared with Alistair, times and memories which have enriched and will continue to enrich our lives, we give you thanks. But above all, we give thanks for all that he meant within his family. We give thanks for the years of marriage with Irene, for the home life and family life of these years, and their continued friendship. We thank you too for all that he was as a dad to Stephen and Roderick. All that he came to mean in Evie's life and all that he was as grandpa to Cassidy. We give thanks for his love for his family, his commitment to them and his pride in them. The place that they all had in his life and the place that he will forever have in theirs. Lord, he will be missed. We thank you for the care that he received in these last weeks and months and can now but pray that at the last we may be reunited with those whom we loved in the peace and the fellowship of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing the hymn, Amazing Grace. Thank you.
Please be seated. And now call on Philip. Good afternoon. In the uh, great Bermudian tradition, uh, Uncle Alistair was not a blood relative, but he was my Uncle Alistair. I know how much he's meant to so many of us, for me personally. He just could never, he could never get enough of what I was doing at any time. At any time I'd run into him on the street, he'd want to hear exactly what was going on. And I think all of us probably have an experience with Alistair, Uncle Alistair, where he was always just the friend you needed at that time the father you needed at that time. So, it's my great honor to sing this for Uncle Alistair. When I am down and oh my soul so weary When troubles come and my heart burden be Then I am still and wait here in the silence Until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You praise 
raise me up to more than I can be. I know these two Barnett boys and the two Johnson boys had some great holidays together, and I'm sure these memories will be shared for, uh, for many, many years. As has been said, Alistair was the organist here, again, for, for many years. In a sense, we give thanks to whoever introduced Alistair first to piano and then to organ, uh, and thanks to God for Alistair himself for all he contributed to the worship here in this place, and we felt it was appropriate that we finish with uh, some organ pieces from, um, from Oliver, who's going to play for us before the final benediction.
sure Alistair would be delighted to hear that organ still being played. I think uh, most of the time Oliver has his music on a large iPad. What Alistair would have made of that, I have no idea. <laughs> but we also felt it was appropriate not to end with something quiet and mournful, but something lively and rousing as better reflecting Alistair Shiki Johnston's life. Would you please stand for a closing benediction? Go now in the peace of God, which is beyond our human understanding, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>